Welcome to the PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain podcast. Post-traumatic stress disorder is not a death sentence, yet a rite of passage to a higher level of tolerance. Stay with us and come out of the darkness as your host, Carl Waggett, shines a light on this very misunderstood disorder. Welcome to PTSD, Bunker Gear for Your Brain. I'm your host, Carl Waggett, and welcome to episode 304. Guys, if this is the first time you've ever found us, it's very nice to meet you. My name is Carl, and this is a podcast about post-traumatic stress disorder. But guys, listen, before you run out the door, nah, we don't get real medical. We don't get up in your cage in the show, nah. We look at things through the eyes of the emergency services, which is uh, police, fire, ambulance, and dispatch, as well as correctionals and Coast Guard and nursing. And guys, I think it goes without saying military, right? But look, if you don't work in those lines of work, hey, it doesn't mean you have to leave the podcast. No, hang out with us for a little bit. It's all cool. And for those of you who do join in from time to time, guys, as always, it's fantastic to see you guys once again. Shall we continue on with the show? I think we should. So, guys, listen, what is it that we're taking a look at this week? Well, guys, we're looking at a ray of sunshine over here. We're talking about when human beings lose hope. Yikes. Yeah, it's a shitty subject. Nobody wants to talk about it. But the fact of the matter is, is guys, if we do talk about it and we do understand it, well, this means we can fight back against it a little bit. So guys, look, let's try to rub a little bit of humor on it and and we'll try to keep everything in perspective here. Remember that word, right? Because that's what we're really going to talk about. But guys, let's let's see how we can go up against this losing hope thing. So guys, in the last episode, we really kind of talked about, you know, what happens to a person when they lose hope. And, and we really took a look at this whole perspective thing as we were talking about. Because guys, as we've established, your perspective, unfortunately, is the only one that really matters when it comes to you. So the problem is, is that if you lose hope and you think you've lost hope, then guys, it really doesn't matter what anybody says to you. The fact of the matter is, is that's your perspective perspective and you're going to hold on to it. So guys, understanding just how dangerous this is, let's move forward with this. And guys, what I really want to talk about right out of the gates, I know we're going to talk about how we can change our perspective. That's the big thing we're going to talk about tonight. But guys, before we get into that, I want to talk about this losing hope thing. Okay. And what is it that makes a person lose hope? Like really, what, what is it? Is it is it a certain thing, right? Is it a certain event? Like, can we benchmark it somehow that, okay, a person can lose hope over this, but you know, if this happens, they shouldn't lose hope. Well, unfortunately with this subject, no, you can't. No, you can't measure it at all, unfortunately. Because most of the time when people lose their hope, they, 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 they sometimes don't even know what it was that caused them to lose hope. Or the thing was, is the thing that pushed them over the edge was so insignificant that they, well, they can't believe it. Right. So the thing is, is that they never really know if they're in this zone or not. Well, anyways, this is how I felt as a person. Right. I thought, holy shit, you know what? I'm. I don't know if I have any hope left or not, right? And I really used to have this inner dialogue with myself. But the problem was is I could never really find that thing and and pinpoint it to, okay, look, this was the moment when I lost hope. Well, guys, this is really the only way I can explain it to you is that when I look back over my particular journey, guys, there really wasn't any one thing that kind of pushed me over the edge. And look, that can happen to some people. Please don't get me wrong. Like something can happen and they can just lose hope. That's it. You know, maybe it's it's a death of a loved one or maybe they lost their job or or something like this happened. But it was a definite moment where they lost hope. Well, for me personally, that really wasn't the case. The fact is, is all of a sudden I realized that I just didn't care anymore. You know, and I know that sounds really, really weird. And it's not that I was angry or that I was mad. I just I just I didn't care. And what I didn't really understand at the time was that, you know what, this whole losing hope thing, this can compound over years, you know, things can happen, things can happen, things can happen, and then all of a sudden one day you're washing your favorite coffee cup in the sink and the handle breaks off, and dude, that's it. Like that was a cup your dad gave you or something like that. Maybe there's some significant reason to that cup or maybe it's just your favorite coffee cup. But the fact of the matter is, is this cup is broken now and for some strange reason, so are you. Or guys, that's what happened to me. Like all of a sudden I remember there was a certain incident that happened in my life and I remember looking at it and going, oh God, I can't continue. Right, that was it. And you know what that time was? When I was writing a blog, okay, and the blog itself crashed. Oh, Jackie knows all about this story because it was a panic in the house because I'd written like five blog posts and now, you know, everything that I'd worked for, it, it now crashed and I didn't know how to get it back and I was devastated and I, I felt this feeling of losing hope. 
Now, the interesting thing is, is when I took a look at my life and everything, it didn't really seem that bad. You know, I was with Jackie. We were in this new house. You know, okay, fine. I was off work. But the thing is, I was managing with it. That was fine. But then all of a sudden, when this one particular situation happened, guys, I couldn't, I couldn't shake it. You know, like I, I really thought that was, that was it. And the problem is, is that life keeps continuing, right? It doesn't stop after you, you get this massive blow. So the problem is, is that me personally, after that happened to me, my perspective took a real shit kicking, right? Because all of a sudden now it was all poor, poor me and look how much Carl had lost. And the problem is with this perspective, as we say, when you start looking at life through those eyes, well, everything seems terrible now. Honest to God, if I would have won the lottery, ladies and gentlemen, I would have complained about the taxes I had to pay on it. Like, seriously, I couldn't find any good. And, you know, the thing was is that even though the blog itself got fixed, don't get me wrong, you know, we got a tech guy on it and got it back and everything was saved, I still had this feeling of loss of hope. So even though what kind of pushed me over the edge got fixed, the fact was is I, I didn't feel like I could find my way back. That was awful. Really, it was it was absolutely terrible because I was living in this world with with, you know, with Jackie and my kids were here and, you know, we've got the the dogs and everything's good. But in my little bubble of life, my perspective, it was hell. Yeah, it was so strange. Even when I even when I think back about it now, it's 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 absolutely incredible how powerful this perspective is. So the thing is, is how do we change this? So look, guys, I'm gonna give a little respect to the situation here, and I'm not gonna suggest that I know how to get you out of the hole that you're in if you find yourself in a situation like that. Like I'm not I'm not gonna say some magic words and it's gonna trigger your brain and all of a sudden your perspective is gonna be safe. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I do want to talk about is the power of changing your perspective okay look how you change your perspective is your business and you will know exactly how to fix yourself there's no doubt you, you really will but the fact is is how do we how do we start this change process because the problem is is anybody who's ever tried to change anything in their life trust me it's not easy right think about it for a second you know let's say you enjoy fatty foods oh i love them a good cheeseburger give me one well how difficult is it to eat a salad yeah, it's actually pretty hard, actually, right? Obviously, you know, you just take the salad and you put it in your mouth. It's simple. But the fact is, is when you're sat there getting ready to order your meal, for some strange reason, you, you, you definitely move towards what you want, right? So the thing is, is how do we change this? Because if we're in a situation right now of losing hope, okay, let's say we've lost hope and we want to change the situation we're in. Well, guys, it's really important to know the science behind changing. So that's what I really want to kind of finish this podcast off with is, look, if I can explain to you how your brain works, okay, and why change is so difficult, the fact is, is that you can kind of flank it with this information, yeah, and you can implement the change in your life that you feel you need to change your perspective. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Okay, so off we go. So look, your brain hates change. Okay, and there's a big reason for this. You see, look, your brain, as I've said before, has one function, and that's really it, and that's to keep you alive. Okay, and the way that your brain keeps you alive, very, very simple, is to avoid pain. Yeah, that's it, right? Now, look, we're not going to get into the whole thing about how your brain goes from pain to pleasure. We're just going to talk about this pain thing, okay? Your brain is not a fan of it. And think about it. That makes a lot of sense. If I feel a little bit of pain, that, that's bringing me a little bit of chance of death. But if I feel a lot of pain, well, there's a, a better chance of death. So your brain ain't down with this, okay? Oh, please understand. Your brain could give zero fucks how happy you are. I'm not kidding. It really doesn't give a shit about your fulfillment, about your joy, about how much love you experience. Experience. All your brain cares about is keeping you alive. That's it. Okay, fine. Good. Now, look, how does your brain do this? As we've established, it tries to avoid pain. But the thing is, is that your brain is so smart that, well, it anticipates pain. Yeah, because it doesn't just want pain showing up, right? Like, holy shit, I've, you know, I've, I've just trapped my hand in a door. That's no good. Your brain doesn't like that. That's pain, right? So what it does is, well, it, it puts us in patterns. Yeah. Seriously. And I know there's a lot of people out there that think they're a free spirit and, oh, yeah, you know what? I do whatever the hell I want. Well, trust me, you're in more of a pattern than you realize. And, guys, this was a huge eye opener for me. So, guys, I want to share this with you guys. Okay, the way that I describe this the best is my darkroom experiment. And for those of you who have listened in, you guys have heard this before. 
okay, let's say we take a 10 by 10 room that's completely blacked out and we'll put just random pieces of furniture in that room. Now, if I make you walk from one side of the room to the other, you're going to bump into stuff, aren't you? Right, of course you are because, well, you can't see, okay, that's fine. But if I make you do that 20 or 30 times, well, your brain will put you in a pattern because it'll learn from the pain that it's felt, right? So if you bang your leg, you'll know to step somewhere else when you go to do this again. Anybody who's had small kids, tucking the little ones in, you do that Indiana Jones run through the, the kid's room because you don't want to step on any Lego or anything that makes any noise to wake them up. Trust me, your brain is taking a picture of that room. Okay, think about this for a second. This is what we do. So the thing is, is that when our brain puts us in a pattern, that means there is less chance of pain right? And we've all experienced this. I'm sure we've all had situations where, look, if we do something enough times, we, we, we stop hurting ourselves, right? Because we figure out a way to do this. Okay, that's no problem. Well, what human beings don't realize is that in the bigger picture, guys, that's exactly what we do every day of our lives. We live in patterns. And if you really want to kind of, you know, look at life a little bit different, take time to look at your patterns because most people never do this. Okay. L look at the patterns you do in the morning. Okay, and seriously, I, you know, as I've said, I don't want to get too graphic here, but when you're in the shower, I bet you wash yourself the same way every single time. Same for brushing your teeth, right? As I've said, you want to have a good laugh? Brush your teeth with your other hand tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you won't do it again because the thing is, is that the dexterity isn't there and you're going to bang your gums and it's going to create pain. So your brain doesn't want that, does it? No, it doesn't. And guys, we could do this all day, every day. Think about the way when you drive to work. I bet there's five or six different ways to go to work, right? But I bet you do it the same way every single time. Because what happens is, is our brain inherently wants to put us in patterns, okay? And this is why change is so much fun for little kids, but such a piss off for old people. Yeah. A great example of this is in elementary school. Look, you go into any grade one, grade two class and you switch all the desks around and the kids will think it's the coolest thing in the world because they're sitting next to new people. They're sitting next to the window. Oh, now I'm sat next to the teacher. But the fact is, is everything's new. Everything's different. Even the stuff on the walls that they're looking at is something new to look at. So for young kids, they get excited about this. But older people, holy shit. Like I said, if you want to start a fight in a firehouse, move the couch. That's all you have to do. Move the couch and somebody will lose their fucking shit when they walk in. Yeah, because we don't like change. Inherently, we all like the same thing. Now, look, this is why change is difficult because our, our brain is kind of stopping us from doing this because it is afraid of pain. But guys, once we show it, there isn't any. That's when cool shit starts to happen. Yeah. That's when change starts to happen. Look, why is working out so difficult? Because it hurts. Yeah, it's really that simple. Guys, we all know the long-term benefits of working out. Do we not? Of course we do. But the thing is, is that as soon as we start to feel pain, our brain shuts us down and goes, this is stupid. And like I said, you know what? Your brain goes one step further. And if you're working out that day, isn't it funny how something just comes up and all of a sudden you can't make it to work out? Yeah, because your brain already knows that, let's say you're working out at six o'clock tonight. Well, you know what? It's going to try and figure out a way for you not to work out. There are times, guys, that I talk myself out of cardio because I had a sore elbow. That doesn't make any sense at all. But at the time, it made all the sense in the world. So look, now that we understand why it is so difficult for us to change stuff in our life, Okay, and I know we all kind of just play it off as well. I don't want to change. You know, I kind of like the shit the way I like it. But no, the fact is, is once we start to wake up that part of our brain that goes, hey, you know what? Change is kind of fucking cool. Yeah, we get to do new shit and we learn stuff because look, your brain also loves information, right? It loves to learn stuff. So once we teach our brain how to change, that means we can. Okay, so look, how do we bring this back to the perspective thing? Well, guys, it's, it's really simple. You just implement it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, people that are caught in these wicked, wicked ruts and, and, you know, they can't seem to, to break out of this terrible groove they're in. Guys, change is your salvation. Okay. Whatever that change is, I don't give a shit. Look, you can join a skipping club. You can join a running club. You can go play eight ball somewhere. Look, it doesn't matter. But the fact is, is implementing this change in your life, dude, it changes your perspective. Okay, because the thing is, is that if you're caught in a vicious, vicious circle, okay, where your perspective is fucked and you don't feel you can change, you are boxed in. That's what happens. Trust me, I felt this one. Yeah, I've, 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 yeah, I've really felt this one, right? But what change does is it unlocks doors. 
okay? Because as soon as you change, that means a whole new world opens up. But the thing is, is if your perspective has had the shit kicked out of it, guys, this isn't even a possibility to you. No, because the problem is, is that your brain is feeling so much pain. And guys, as we've said, there's really not a lot of difference between physical pain and mental pain, right? So the problem is, is when your brain is feeling this much pain because you've lost hope and your perspective's done, Dude, your number one instinct is to just hunker down and don't do anything new. Because guys, I gotta leave you with this one little thing. Oh my God, I can see my time's running out here. But guys, please understand this when I say this, okay? Your brain will always take pain it knows over the pain it doesn't know. Seriously. I think back to my drinking days when, when I knew that drinking two bottles of wine was bad for me, but it might hurt more if I didn't. Yeah, I know. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? But unfortunately, when your body and your brain is in that much pain, that kind of thinking does make sense, right? So the problem is, is that when we don't understand change, we can't implement it, okay? And when we can't implement change, guys, we, we get ourselves boxed in, right? And that's a really, really, really dangerous place to be. So guys, look, I know I've gone over my time. I'm very, very sorry about that. But the thing is, guys, in our next podcast, we're going we're gonna to see how we can use this information. Okay, like seriously, when you actually implement the change and you see the doors that can open, okay, what do we do now? Okay, because we've almost got you out of this hole. Yeah, seriously, don't get me wrong. It's a lot of work. It is. It's a shitload of work. But let me tell you what else it is. It's fucking worth it. Like it really, really is. So if you guys can hang in for one more podcast with this losing hope thing, I know it's a bit of a downer subject, but guys, I think we can really get some incredible ground on this problem. I really can. And show you guys exactly what is out there because with your perspective broken, you guys are just boxed in and we've got to get you out of that. So guys, listen, if you happen to get a chance to drop by our Facebook live show, I think you should, especially on a show like this. So head on over to that Facebook website, go to the search bar, put in PTSD bunker gear for your brain boom will pop up yeah that's the way we roll every monday wednesday friday evening 9 30 eastern standard time what we do is we do a little facebook live show and i i take this podcast and I, and I turn it into a facebook live show yeah no it works out really really well so guys if you get a chance to stop by that please do yes it'd be great to see you and look guys as i always say if you're really suffering with this ptsd stuff and it's starting to really kind of rack your brain but you don't want to tell anybody about it look i got a private facebook group called the bunker room look i think you guys are really going to enjoy this so if that's something that you're interested in send me a friendship request to Carl Wagon on Facebook there and I'll send you an invitation to the bunker room. So guys, look, you know what? It's a bit of a tipsy-turvy week. It really is. You know, we're up high on mountains. We're down low in valleys. This is what happens when people start to lose hope. But now that we kind of understand how we can implement change in our life, guys, trust me, now we get to have a little bit more fun. Oh, trust me, this one's going to be entertaining. So anyways, guys, if you happen to get a chance to get yourself out there for a nice walk, I would seriously recommend you do simply because it'll do your soul the world of good. You guys take care of yourself. Bye now. Thanks for listening to the PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain podcast. Gain more knowledge by going to ptsdbunkergearforyourbrain.com. While you're there, subscribe and comment. Join us next time for the PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain podcast.